So this morning, I went down to my storage locker and I finally brought up my Christmas tree and my Christmas decorations. I've not put them up yet, but they're sitting in my living room. And if you guys are anything like me, you, you want to make things for people for Christmas and the holidays, but you don't want to be like that, how do I put this? I like my friends and family a lot, but I don't like them that much that I would go ahead and spend like 80 hours making them a sweater, you know? But you still want to make them something, so I have come up with a few things you guys can make that will be under an hour, which I feel like that's a good amount of love. And I'm actually slightly prepared for today's video. I'm not going to say fully because I'm not fully, but I'm slightly prepared. So I even have a little mock-up of the first thing we are going to make today. Ta-da! I made this yesterday. I got the pattern already. And I'm going to teach you guys how to make your friends and family a crochet purse. So supplies, I ended up using the Crazy Sexy Wolf from Wool and the Gang for this entire purse right here. And for this next one, I'm gonna use this one from Wool and the Gang, and then also this other chunky yarn that was in my vault. As for crochet hook, I'm using a big old 12 millimeter. So I'm gonna start with the blue here from Wool and the Gang, and I find it not chunky enough. Like you want some real chunky yarn for this, so I'm actually, actually actually double layering it so i'm taking both ends this end and i'm gonna be crocheting with two strands Did that make sense? I hope that made sense. Because it's really easy to make this purse. We're just gonna keep going in single crochet, around and around and around until we get sick of this color or we finish the bag. And I'll also have all the links down below for some yarn. It doesn't have to be this Wool the Gang one. It just has to be a chunky one. So I'll have a few options down below. For changing colors. There's a lot of different methods, but there's always one method I go to, which is called either the spit splice method or the wet splice method, which I've showed a ton on my channel, which I did not create it. I wish I came up with it, but you can Google it if you wanna learn more information about it, but I'll give you guys the gist of it. So first thing we're gonna do, cut. Good job. Grab your next color. I'm gonna use this one. After that, I am going to take all of these ends and I'm pretty much just going to pick them apart. Fray them. We're going to fray the edges. I'm going to do that with both sides. Bam, bam, turkey chicken. Next, I just have a little cup of water and I'm just going to dip this one in there. Get it all nice and wet. Now I'm just going to overlap them. Kind of wrap them together. Ta-da. And then rub them together. And there we go. We got one piece of yarn. You can kind of pull on it and it won't go anywhere. Like it might not look that sturdy, but man, it's sturdy. It's in there. They're not going anywhere. And now I do not have to weave in any ends. These colors look real good together, don't they? If you guys have not heard of Pila before, you must have been living under a rock because they've been a long-term sponsor on my channel and I've been using their cases for almost three years now. All of their cases are biodegradable, they are a Canadian company, and they have amazing designs. The perfect three combo. 
And I know your next question is, how are they biodegradable? Well, they're made from plants. And then your next question is, are they gonna protect my phone? Yes. Every single one of Pila's cases actually have a military grade drop protection. So if you're like me and you drop your phone like 48 times a day, it will protect your phone. Trust me. True story, my friend had a Pila case on her phone. Someone ran it over with their car and it still worked. So if you guys want to try out Pila and get your own biodegradable case, be sure to use my link down below in the description and also use the code Jenna at checkout and you'll get 30% off your order. So feeling pretty good about this bag size. I like it. It's good. It gets two hairy thumbs up. So next we are doing the straps. So I just ended almost on the corner here. You can see I just have like one more stitch from like the true corner because for the true corner, I don't think it's actually called that, but I'm just gonna call it that. I'm just gonna do a slip stitch there. So next, this is where we're gonna make the length of our strap and you can make it short, you can make it long, you can make it medium, you can make it extra long, whatever floats your boat. But what I'm doing to get the length of the strap is just, you know, chain stitches. So just keep chaining away until you're happy. Yeah, short strap. So once you have the length of the strap, just make sure it's not twisted. We don't want to twist the strap. No, you cannot give your mom or your dad or your brother a twisted strap bag. That's not going to fly. So now I am just going to slip stitch it through so it's connected like that. You're gonna go to the side that is closest to the center there, and you're gonna do one more slip, slip, slip stitch. That is honestly like a tongue twister, slip stitch, into the one beside it. And then we are gonna go and we're gonna do a single crochet all along the strap here to the other side, and then Bob's your uncle. I'm just really happy that we got one done in under an hour. So we're gonna keep on that streak and we're gonna move on to the next one and I'm gonna show you them all at the end because I kinda wanna try styling an outfit with the bag I made. Next one is, let me grab it, a scrunchie. We're gonna knit a scrunchie. And if you're a pro crocheter and not a knitter, you can also do this with crochet, but I just had a feeling that knit would be less bulky for what you're putting in your hair, so that is why we're gonna do it knit, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it knit. I didn't pick up my yarn yet. What am I doing? Okay, let's go to my vault of yarn and see what color I want for this next scrunchie. Do you guys have not seen my yarn vault before? Here it is. I could do like a green and peach color, blue and orange, peach and orange. Okay, I decided I'm gonna go with this cream, or it's yellow, this yellow and this green. So I'm gonna do the opposite for this scrunchy Benson. Can you stop licking the toes? Benson's a toe licker. Well, he's just a licker, he's got like a licking disorder, but especially the toes. I am gonna do the same pattern as last, so I'm gonna do the stripes, except I'm gonna do the opposite where I'm starting with the yellow color, so the yellow will be more prominent, and then the green's gonna be where the yellow is. First step, long tail cast on, and we're gonna use six millimeter circular needles. These bad boys. And I'm going to cast on 50 stitches. Yes, the big 5-0. So now that we got the big 5-0 stitches on here, you kind of want to stretch them out so it's like completely around the needles like this. So I'm going to start with the strands on the right side and no strands on this side, and then just start knit stitching. Okay, finished two rows, got my stitch marker on there. We're looking pretty spiffy. So now it's time to change color. I'm gonna do the pattern of two 
rows per color. I did it for this last scrunchie and I think it looks pretty fire. And I'm not gonna cut the yarn when I'm changing colors. So when I'm adding this green here, I'm just gonna put a slip knot and then start knitting with it. And then when we change colors again, I'll show you how you like crisscross them so you can just keep changing colors without having to like cut it. You can just let it dangle on the side. So we're officially halfway. This is what halfway looks like. And if you're not doing stripes, I have done nine rows. And for my 10th row, I am gonna be doing all pearl stitches. And the reason why I'm doing that is because we want it to fold over and a pearl stitch will just make it fold over nicely. officially halfway. Or actually we're over halfway. Cause technically once you do the pearl, then you're over halfway. And now we just need to do nine rows like we did right here. Benson's so excited because it's sunny in the deck and he thinks it's warm out, but <laughs> little does he know it's zero degrees. Okay, let him out. So I have a total of 19 rows done now. Pretty good. So now I am just going to cast off, bind off this last row. Last one. This one should be the quickest because we're using chunky yarn again and we're gonna be knitting a nice ear warmer headband. And you remember at the beginning of the video when I said I was like semi prepared for this video? Lightly prepared. Well, this is the one I was prepared but not really prepared because I lost the headband that I made. So for supplies, I'm using 12 millimeter round, circular, 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 circular. So for supplies, 12 millimeter circular needles, but you can also do this on flat needles and just do it flat and then sew it together at the end, but I'm gonna do it in the round. And then you're also gonna need some chunky yarn. And to start off with, we need a really, really, really long tail because we're gonna do a long tail cast on again. So I'm doing it like almost like the height of me. And then I am going to cast on 
40 stitches. Next, we are gonna be doing a one by one rib for the whole headband because we want it to be nice and snug and stretchy on our little heads. One knit stitch, one purl stitch. So I'm pretty sure I'm only doing five rows for the headband, which I'm just guessing because I lost my sample, so I, I don't really remember. So I'm gonna stop here at three rows and I'm gonna trim it and then join the yarn with the new blue. Okay, we're back on the road again. Look at that. That's one wild crocodile. I'm ready to finish this headband, ear warmer, whatever we wanna call this. So we have three of the dark blue, two rows of the light blue, so I'm just gonna cast off, bind off, whatever you wanna call it, and I'm not gonna be fancy, like I'm not doing an Italian bind off or any of those fancy ones, I am just doing the basic one. Just the basic, which I know it's not as stretchy as per se, like an Italian bind off, but I find if you do the regular bind off, cast off, I, you know, and you do it with a little, you know, ease, looseness, then it's a-okay. I did not have any problems with the headband, so I'm just gonna cast off loosely. So you probably thought when I said at the beginning of the video that I wasn't gonna show you everything till the end because I wanted to style it and show you how I'd wear each piece because they're all wearable. Well, I am actually coming through with that promise and I'm actually doing it. So first piece we made was the purse here and how I style it is I have a nice oversized knit sweater with the turtleneck underneath and then I just have like this fun flowy skirt underneath. I'm just trying to keep it nice warm cozy vibes but also kind of neutral so the purse can kind of be like the thing of the outfit you know a little 360 it's very basic so if you don't have the purse it's kind of like eh. but then you add the purse eh? so next i've been wearing it the whole time it is the scrunchie and i just love having my hair up i just i don't know i just it's just something about having your hair out and just having it out of your face. You can like move freely. It's not like you're getting hot. There's no like big, huge knot in the back of your, your neck, like hair knot. I just love having my hair up in a bun. So here's how I did it. Can we even see it? I can't see the back of my head. I hope it looks good because I feel like it looks good from the front, but then <laughs> didn't check the back. I just put it in and I was like, oh, this feels pretty good. It feels like it looks good back there. Who knows? You guys are the judge. Judge nicely. But there it is. And that's how I'd wear it with like any outfit. I wear a scrunchie legit with any outfit. So, and then for the last piece we made was the headband. And I usually don't just wear a headband like all day when I was wearing the one I lost. Most of the time I was actually wearing it at the mountain when I was cross country skiing. Probably not the headband you're supposed to be sweating in. So maybe a good thing that I lost it. But I like to wear this outside when it's really cold. So usually what I do is just pop it over my head like this. You can also wear it as like a true headband. Like where you actually just like put your hair back with it. Oh, 
I like that better. Yes. I, yeah, if you see me on the streets when it's snowing and it's cold out, I will be wearing my headband like this and I'll be wearing this headband because I lost my other one. Well, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed making these gifts with me. If you do make one, be sure to tag me on Instagram, at JennaFibs, and also subscribe to my channel because I'm trying to get to 500,000, but that's all I had to say. So I hope you all have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys in my video next week. Bye.